What is going on, beautiful people? I am Lee Hammock, the diagnosed self-aware narcissist known as mental illness, and welcome to another episode of the Narcissist Code. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about do narcissists have a grand plan from the beginning? Is it all a scheme from the word go, from the first I see you, I like you. If y'all are new here, I use my platform on social media to raise awareness for NPD, get more people into therapy, and validate the victims and survivors of said disorder, said toxic people, said toxic traits. Uh, but yeah, y'all, before we hop into today's episode, y'all, make sure, if you haven't already, to check out my self-love journal on Amazon. It's available on Amazon.com, uh, Lee Hammock, I Love Me, a self-love journal to help you rebuild that self-love and identity after a toxic relationship. But yeah, y'all, is it all a scheme from the very beginning? I know a lot of people are going to differ in this, so let me start off by saying this. This is just my perspective. This perspective of a diagnosed narcissist. This is just my, my perspective on is it a grand scheme from the beginning when you're in a relationship with a narcissistic person. So could it be? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it absolutely could be a grand scheme from the beginning. That's how the mind of a lot of narcissistic people works right there, y'all. It could be that they, like, if they're super disconnected emotionally from you, it could absolutely be a grand scheme from the, from the word go, from like, I love you, from I miss you. The, the very first relationship, the very first piece of it could be a scheme from the beginning to manipulate you, to take your resources, to get whatever they are looking to get from you. It could be that way right there, y'all. But, when you do a lot of times, y'all being realistic, it might not be a scheme. I think that some narcissistic people are here, some of those that are lower on the the lower on the spectrum or whatever, not the psychopathic, sociopathic ones. They actually scheme. They plan to get you to fall for them because they actually think that they like you. Some of them actually do like you. At the beginning, y'all. So I don't think some people, some many people ask me, was it real in the beginning? Yeah, I think the realest part of a touch of a relationship with a narcissist is the beginning. And I, I know that's crazy to say because in the beginning, most times, a lot of the time, that narcissistic person isn't being their true selves. You know what I mean? The narcissistic person that you're dealing with isn't being who they really are. They not, are not being their authentic, true self. So I know people was like, so how can it be truly? If it's how can it be true from the beginning if they are not being their authentic selves? Explain that one, buddy. Explain that one, bucko. You see what I'm saying? But <laughs> that's how a lot of people's minds work right there, y'all. It's just like so many people like so. So for me in my relationships, y'all, when I see somebody that I like, that I think I want to be with, in my mind, also, also, y'all, let me back up. Let me remember one is it depends on where that person is in life. If that person has been single for a while and is looking to fall for somebody, then, like I said, a lot of times it's not a grand scheme to manipulate you and steal from you and take from you and hurt you and harm you. I don't think it's a scheme from that. But sometimes, y'all, if they are just getting out of a relationship, y'all, if you are the new supply, if you are the rebound person for this narcissistic person, it could be a grand plan from the beginning to use you to hurt somebody else. You might very well be the new supply in this situation right here. You see what I'm saying? You might be the new supply here. It's just like, you might be the person that I'm using to hurt my ex with. And sometimes I do fall for you and we end up being together for a long time. But initially, the bottom low, the foundation of our relationship was built on me trying to get back at my ex. The foundation of our relationship was built on me trying to hurt somebody else. You know what I mean? That's the foundational element of this relationship that a lot of people don't talk about. Sometimes these relationships are built on pain. Not your pain, but the pain of somebody else. The intent to inflict pain on someone else. So in that case right there, y'all, it could be a grand scheme, a grand plan from the beginning, but it's a grand plan to hurt somebody else. Not to necessarily, to necessarily hurt you, but to hurt somebody else. Do you end up getting hurt a lot of times? Yes. But was that the plan from the beginning? Like, I'm going to hurt this person I meet right here because in the process, I'm going to hurt my ex. I don't think it's like that a lot of times, y'all. But again, could I be wrong? Absolutely, yes. But like I said, but this is just my perspective on it right there. I know people. some people can agree, can disagree. You know what I mean? But sometimes, y'all, in the beginning of the relationship, they might, like I said, that's, if, they're, if they are on the rebound, if, they, if you are the new supply, right after the, of another of one of their relationships ended, then yeah, a lot of times, y'all, it's not going to be genuine. It's not going to be genuine. It's not going to be authentic. It's going to be toxic as hell from the beginning. They're going to lie to you. They're going to manipulate you. They're going to do a lot of different stuff to you. You know what I mean? 
But that's the space that a lot of people fall into. So this is what you have to deal with sometimes, y'all. This is the space that some people have to deal with. You have to deal with this toxicity. You have to deal with this toxic narcissistic person. Like, if that person, if that narcissist that you're dealing with, that toxic person that you're dealing with, right? If they are looking to be with somebody and they meet you and they actually like you, I don't think the grand plan is is come from a place of malicious intent. I don't think it comes from a place of them being evil and out to try to hurt you. Can it be true? Can some of them do that? Yes, absolutely. Y'all. This is not speaking about all narcissistic people. This is talking about a, a, a lot of them, though. You know, that some of the plan is just like that. I like this person, but I don't think that they can like me for me. I really like you. But I don't think it's possible for you to like me for me. So I need to become someone else. I need to be somebody else to get you to fall for me. So I like you so much that I go above and beyond for you. I like and care about you so much that I want to do more for you. I like and think about you so much that I have that I need to make you happy. I need to be able to make you happy. I like you this much. You see what I'm saying? This is the dot. This is the dot. dot. This is the dynamic. This is the mindset. I don't think it's a grand plan to hurt you from the beginning all the time. Sometimes, yes. But a lot of times, the grand plan comes from them actually liking you and wanting to be with you and wanting to care about you and wanting to do this, wanting to do that. Sometimes, that's where the grand plan stems from right there in that space. You know? So, they always don't. So I know a lot of people are just like, there's a lot of channels out here that just tell you it was all fake from the beginning. I don't know. Like, say, y'all. Does that help some people heal to think that it was all fake from the beginning? Yeah, that helps some people heal. But other people on on the same line, that hurts them to think that they wasted 43 years of their life with somebody who didn't care about them, who was faking the whole time. That might destroy somebody from the inside out. I really feel like it's situationally dependent. I don't think it's a plan from the beginning to hurt you, to destroy you, to manipulate you, and to just take everything from you. Do some do that? Yes, but I don't. For me personally, in my own personal life, when the people that I liked, I liked them. I wanted them to like me, so I went above and beyond to get that person to like me. Yeah, I might have be- became somebody else in the beginning to get them to fall for me. I might have just went outside my normal, the, my, the normal parameters of who I am to get that person to like me. I might have went out. I might have went above and beyond to like quote unquote trick somebody or whatever, but I like that person. Is it bad? Is it bad? Is it building it on bad foundation to start off with not being my authentic self? Yes, absolutely. But in my mind, I like you so much. I want you to like me. So yeah, could we have similar interests? Yes, we can have similar interests. We could have similar likes and dislikes from the very beginning. It's not always mirroring. Sometimes we might actually like the same thing. Like me personally. Me and my wife were like, um, we have we liked a lot of the same movies. We like we one of our uh, the, the things that connected us in the beginning where we liked like like one liners from movies. You see what I'm saying? Like we watching Pineapple Express and not Pineapple Express, uh well Pineapple, Pineapple Express is one of the movies. I I made a comment one time, right? I was just like, I thought uh I thought uh what is it? I thought Hurricane Season was over. And she was like, You like Pineapple Express? I'm like, yeah, that's my movie. Then we connected on that right there. And then, and then she said something about, uh, uh, come on, man, we're a unit. I said, I was like, we, got, we have to be a unit. And she was like, suck my unit. That came from Tropic Thunder. So we connected on Tropic Thunder. You see what I'm saying? It's just in that space right there. There's things that we actually did like and didn't. There's things that we both actually had in common. But there's things that we didn't have in common that I might have picked up from her that I knew that she liked. I liked her, so I was like, I want you to like me, so let me say I like this stuff right here, even though I might not really like it. You know what I mean? Even though I might not really actually want to do this right here, let me tell you that I like, that I might want to do this right here. You know what I mean? Let me show you that I, this is part of who I am. This is part of what I like to do. You see, you see, you see what I'm saying, though? You get into that space, you fall into that situation, you get into these dynamics a lot right there, and that's what happens, y'all. That's what happens. A lot of times, toxic, narcissistic people become who they need to be. They just add on a few things from you to get me to get you to fall for them because they like you. I'm not making excuses, y'all, but I don't think it's an insidious plan from the beginning all the time. That's just how I think. Some people will come over here. You, y'all, are you are. Yeah, this is the crazy thing about this channel and all my videos that I post. 
You are absolutely allowed to disagree with me on here. I promise you, I don't take offense when people, people disagree with me. I promise you, I don't. It's when people get disrespectful, like you leave you a lying, cold-hearted, uh, narcissistic bastard. That's when I'm just like, you're wrong. Like you could have just said, Lee, I don't think this is true. Here's why, and provided some context. And I'm like, okay, yeah, cool. I understand where you're coming from. You know, but like, Lee, you lying bastard. Of course, you don't think it's malicious from the beginning. You lying, narcissistic, beep beep beep, just cussing me out. I'm like, what are you? Huh? You could have just said it in a respectful way. You chose disrespect, and sometimes I'm gonna choose disrespect back. That's how it goes, though, y'all. I don't think it's always a evil plan from the beginning. Sometimes it is, but sometimes that plan is to get you to fall for them, you know, because they actually like you. But then the crazy thing happens is I have a video, the video I posted yesterday, um, when you pun they punish you for loving you. The, the video podcast that I did yesterday, go back and watch that one because they kind of ties into this one. Because once I become my true self. Then I don't think you like I said, once I take the mask off, so to speak, and show you who I really am, and then you tell me you want the old version of me back, <laughs> that causes a lot of turmoil in a narcissistic person's mind, y'all. So they don't think they're worthy of your love. They want you to they want you to fall for them, but a lot of times they don't think they're worthy of it, y'all. Anyway, y'all, if you made it this far, make sure you hit that subscribe button, y'all. The more people like we go, I just realized how close we are to a half a million. 500k on YouTube. We are so close to getting there, y'all. We would love to hit that goal by the end of this year, which would be, which would be, which would be, out of this world, incredible. If somehow, some way, shape, or form, we could hit 500,000. But also, y'all, tune in every Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, to my live YouTube show called Waving the Red Flag. Waving the Red Flag, y'all. It's about toxic relationships, dealing with narcissists. This week's episode is about love bombing. Love bombing, y'all. So if you're uh, interested in coming on telling your story about love bombing, send an email to wavingtheredflagshow at gmail.com to put your story in there. Or you can send a red, uh, you can send a love bombing question to my voicemail. The voicemail number is posted everywhere. The voicemail number is 855-432-5637. Send a love bombing. Tell me how you would love bomb. Ask me, is this love bombing or real love? Send your love bombing story in to 855-432-5637. And tune in to, on Thursday, y'all. Like and subscribe for more. Mental Illness is out. Peace.